Hi guys, today I'll be teaching or showing you how to turn a normal powder fire extinguisher into a much safer tubeless inflation device than a 2 litre coke bottle. Stuff you'll need is pretty basic and not that much really. You'll basically need your fire extinguisher, set of pliers, a 6mm drill bit, a 3mm drill bit, some tubing, uh, compression tubes will work but uh, this clear tube also works fine some plumbing tape, a scissor, a valve, tubeless valve or one that you cut out of a tube, doesn't matter and a drill okay firstly um, empty your fire extinguisher how you do this is completely up to you but just make sure it's empty just need to get the camera in a better place and then after this you need to unscrew the head you can do this you should be able to do this by hand but some you might need it you might need a span or something Okay, next, uh, remove this tube here. There's a spring inside here. The spring, make sure you don't lose this. Okay, and next you need to unscrew this. This is the safety release valve. This is where we're going to put in the tubeless or tube valve. They are pretty loose on these small fire extinguishers, but you need, may need to use a plier to get it started okay, inside you'll find the spring and plastic bit you can just ditch that don't need it now this hole I'm not sure what the inner diameter of this is but we need to extend this to 6 millimeters to fit the valve ok now I'm going to drill the hole into the cap where the valve is going to go into. I know I said uh, use a 6mm drill bit to drill the hole but I'm going to start with a 4 and then go to a 5 and then go to a 6. Also you'll see I'm not using a vise, I'm using two uh, C clamps because my vise broke. So yeah. and we're through now I'm just going to clean this up and then I'll continue the video from there alright guys so I cleaned up the cap and now the valve is in there along with the lock ring you'll see there there's some plumbing tape there I just put that as an extra measure to prevent leaks and I tightened this up with a set of bars so I'm very very confident there will, won't be any leaks from the valve now next is a pretty tricky step. I'm just kidding, I have to show you. Now I'm not, let me just see if I can get this thing to focus. Uh, ah, there you go. Now if you see in the middle there's that tiny hole there. Now that's the hole coming from this side where we're going to put the valve. Now that's a little small and it's a little constriction with constricting wing which makes the pumping up of the cylinder quite hard. So we're going to drill that a bit with a 3mm drill bit. Alright guys, I'm now going to drill the small 
I'm now going to drill this small hole a tiny bit bigger to allow for better airflow when inflating the canister. I'm not sure how good you're going to see this, but I have to move the camera slightly. And I have a light here, so it's quite tricky. Okay, so just a tiny bit. Just draw it very, very lightly. Yep, that looks right. Okay guys, we're basically done now. Next thing to do is screw in our valve to this side here. Now I'm also going to put a little bit of plumbing tape on there just as I said before it makes a slightly better seal and then hopefully we don't get any air leaks. Perfect. Just go straight back onto the head. Those are pretty easy, and then just tighten it down with a set of pliers or a spanner if you want to. Not too tight. If you're pretty good of torque, I would say 4 Newton meter. If you know what it feels like with your hand, otherwise, just, just lightly, not over tight. Otherwise, you'll strip the internal threads and then it'll never seal anyway. Next, I'm just gonna put back the valve core. You obviously know what that is. Just going to tighten it down. Again, not that much. You'll probably know how much of valve core needs to be tightened. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is basically it. Next, I'm just going to put back this spring here. So it's on the small side there. Cut away around. No, it's all the way around. Okay. Big side into the tube, and then small side into the head. Just press down and tighten. Now what that spring does, it activates the lever, so there's something that kicks back the lever. Then after this, just screw it back into the bottle. Maybe just, again, I'm going to put it another small section of plumbing tape. It's just, I like doing it, it prevents any air leaks. And it'll just help keep the job pretty tight. Just like that. Nice and easy, nothing too complicated. And just screw this back in. Okay, 
can I can just tighten this up by hand, but if you want to, you can lock it down with a span or something. I'm just gonna take it by hand. So that's the way I got it from the store, and that's basically it. Now we just pump up and release the pressure. Now next you want to attach your pipe or hose, whatever you got to for your project or work. Just put that over the head of the nozzle. My nozzle seems a little bit loose, so I'm just going to tighten that down slightly. Just like that. And then, to ensure the tube doesn't fly off, probably can't see that. Okay, just to ensure that the tube doesn't fly off under pressure, squeeze it on a tiny bit more so it's at the back of the head. Just put one cable tie around it. Finger tight should be enough. Just cut that off. Maybe just fire down so there isn't a sharp point. Okay, next we'll go give it a test. Okay guys, so here's the finished product, but you'll notice something. Uh, when I pumped it up to about 100 psi, it was a tiny leak here. So what I did was, I put some more plumbing tape on the valve, and I took a Mavic lock ring. Now under this lock ring, there's a small rubber o-ring as well. So just to seal it up a bit more. So then I pumped it up to 110 psi again, and absolutely no air leaks. Now next we're gonna pump it up and then I'm gonna show you how it inflates a tire. So let me just get the pump. Simple, just open up your valve, put on your pump, and start pumping it up basically. I'm just gonna put that over there. Let you see the gauge. Now, if you're also using a 1kg, uh, I'd recommend going up to about 105. You can go more, but I wouldn't recommend it. It won't burst, these things are rated to about 370 psi, it's just safety precaution. If you have a big extinguisher, you can go even to 90 psi because you're going to have a lot, of, a lot more air. But 100 psi for this one is sufficient. And also, trust the gauge on your pump and not the gauge on the tank over here because it the pressure creeps up slowly on it and I don't think it's very accurate. Maybe mine's damaged or something, but rather trust the gauge on your pump. Okay, now let's pump up the wheel. Okay guys, you can see the wheel's flat. What I'm also going to do is pull it off the bead. Okay, so now it's completely off the bead. Now nothing is, nothing is helping the tire stay on. So, now you'll be properly able to see how good this thing works. Okay. Okay, now simply slip on your tube or compressor tube or anything, hose, whatever you used. Make sure it's over the valve properly. Just like that will do. 
Now next, make sure you hold it on with your finger to make sure it doesn't fly off. And then just press and there you go. Rock hard. Now you, you could even have here, yeah, they did slip some air over the valve in the tube, that's because it wasn't on properly, so try to get it a little bit more. But there you saw, the tire was off the bead, completely flat, it seated and pumped it up rock hard. So yes, that's basically it.